Today on Hardtail Party, we're getting experimental to see what bird spokes feel like compared to standard steel spokes. I have a lot of wheel videos on my channel because wheels are one of the best ways you can improve the ride of your bike. If you want to pick my brain on wheels and chat and get my recommendations on what I recommend for you and where you ride, become a patron today. I do that over on Patreon. Today we've got two almost identical sets of Atomic FM30 wheels. One has traditional metal spokes and the second set has bird spokes, those fibrous kind of string rope-like Dyneema. Uh, HD PME, I think it's called. Anyway, the super ultralight spokes that are really strong, they're very expensive. And today we're gonna compare them back to back. Let's talk about these wheels a little bit. These are from Atomic Carbon. I'm a big fan of Atomic Carbon. They are OCD with their wheels and they do a really nice job building their wheels. This is using the Fusion Fiber Rim. This is the same rim you'll find on Revel, Evil, Chris King, Oh, there's a couple other companies I'm forgetting that use this same exact rim they just branded on their company. It's made in the US. It uses longer fibers and less resin. The idea in theory on paper is that they're flexier and softer. I haven't found them to be super soft. They're softer than your traditional really cheap Chinese rim, but they're not as supple as the very best of the best carbon rims but it's really interesting to take a look at them. You can see the design. They've got these little arrow cutouts in these little sections and they just keep repeating. Anyway, they're beautiful wheels uh, and Atomics wheels are 99.9% .9 made in America. I have a feeling the spoke nipples or maybe it's the tape on them that's not made in America. But uh, if you like supporting American, this is a great way to do it. These wheels have a 29 internal. So rather than compare weights online, I decided to weigh my entire wheels with tires, rotor, cassette on them. And man, wheels are a lot heavier than I thought. I've got over 10 pounds of just wheels and tires on this bike. It weighed 6.0 pounds in uh, grams. That's 2.7 kilograms or 2,720 grams. Six pounds is just your back wheel. The front wheel came in at 4.94 pounds or 2,240 grams with a 200 mil rotor. I'm running a dissector. 29 by 2.43 C on the front and a specialized ground control 2.3 grid casing in the rear. All right, enough nerding out. That's just kind of the baseline. Let's go see what they ride like on the same exact trail. We're gonna take it down this trail, come back, swap wheels and see if I can tell a difference. It's about a $600 price difference and carbon wheels are already expensive. So are you gonna get $600 more performance out of it? Let's find out. All right, here we go. This is kind of our baseline. These ride softer than a lot of carbon rims, but not as soft as the softest ones. Thanks a lot, it's just me. Have a good day. These also aren't the lightest carbon rims out there. They're fairly heavy. A lot of people go carbon to save weight and rotational weight's really where you feel it. But the Fusion Fiber rims, are fairly heavy in as far as carbon wheels go. But if the ride feel is supple, that's worth it to me. For example, the Zip 30 Moto rims are super heavy for carbon, but man, I'll take the weight penalty for the smooth ride feel. These are a lot softer than something like a light bicycle rim or even some of the Noble wheels which I think are light bicycle rims anyway. These feel good though. They don't feel heavy. This feels good. I feel like I need a little lower tire pressure. Yeah, these are softer than 80% of the rims out there. They're just not blowing my mind soft. The Spinergy wheels, the Zips are definitely softer. I got a whole video comparing six high-end wheel sets. Nice wheel though, they track well, feel solid. Thank you, it's just me. I am bouncing around, I think most of it's my pressure. Got a lot of vibration in my feet, but this 
a chunky trail for a hardtail. Good, I get a little break for a second. Hello, you guys can come on up. Thank you. You're welcome, have a great day. You too. All right. A lot of bomb holes in this and sharp rocks. Tried to get a follow cam today, but none of my buddies could join me. You guys know me if you've been watching the channel. I'm all about finding new ways to make bikes supple. Because hardtails are, are stiffer than the squishy bikes. And man, it's amazing. Ooh, just not prepared for that. Amazing what a difference some small things can do like tire pressure, fork settings, frame construction, all that stuff. Yeah, man. I love this bike. My maniac is the best. This trail's great. All right. That's a good baseline. Now we're going to come back with the same exact tires, same exact wheels, except for the bird spokes and hub, and same exact tire pressures. So this is a rough trail. It doesn't show it very well on the GoPro. We've got no shadows on the trail, but there's a whole bunch of like, 12 to 36 inch just drops into chunk and it's dry and it's rocky and it's harsh on a hardtail this is not ideal hardtail territory but that's okay hardtails are super versatile and i like to show that they can be ridden just about anywhere but i did notice like my joints were pretty beat up at the end of that like my wrists and my hands especially the palms of my hands just had a lot of fatigue just a lot of vibrations i was running higher pressure than i normally do so that's definitely contributing to it but we'll see if I have the same feeling at the bottom of this. I may. We're not sure. My hypothesis is that, the, that these will be a little bit smoother. I don't know, though, because usually I'm running a lot lower pressure, like, I don't know, 18 to 20 PSI instead of 22. So this wheel set has the bird spokes. These ones are black. It's a little hard to see, but they are a weave, like a uh, synthetic weave. So the front wheel came in at 21.25 grams or 4.68 pounds. And the rear one came in a quarter pound lighter at 5.77 pounds and 2,615 grams. Yeah, these are a quarter pound lighter per wheel. Um, that's a good thing. Lighter wheels are always better. But what it really comes down to is can you feel that on the trail and is it a noticeable difference? Let's go find out. I do notice, and I noticed it riding over here to the start of the trail, the lighter <coughs> feel when you accelerate and climb like <coughs> these wheels do feel noticeably lighter spinning up and I think every single person would feel that now when you don't compare them back to back probably not a massive difference but when you are comparing them back to back I'm convinced any rider that's been riding more than a year would definitely notice that lighter feel they just spin up quicker i know some of you have written to me saying you had a really stiff wheel set and then you put bird spokes on them and it completely softened out the ride let's see if my experience matches yours oh thanks a lot have a good day it's weird it's definitely quieter the bike feels zippier it wants to keep momentum a little better. Feels like there's a little less chatter, but we're not really in it yet. Here we go. I can definitely feel a difference. Hello. I see you. I won't hit you. You can come on up here. I'll wait and find a good spot for you. You're fine. You can come on up. It's just me. Hey, no problem. Have a good day. Welcome to Sedona. It's kind of hard to test things because there's always people on the trails, but here we go. I feel like I'm going faster. I don't know if I am. Way less harsh. It's still harsh, don't get me wrong. You won't mistake this for a full suspension. I have more control. Like, is it massive? No, I'm still riding a hardtail on a janky 
rough trail. My joints are still feeling it. I feel like I'm in more control. It's not a squishy feel, it's just quiet and a little smoother. Kind of like when you ride cush core on a wheel set, it kind of, or like double down casings, it just kind of dampens it a little. Man, this is rough. It's weird. I don't have the traction of lower pressure. So it's not like, I think I'd still get a smoother ride running three PSI lower than running these spokes. But when you run three PSI lower and you run these spokes, what a great combo that could be. These are the best wheels that I have right now. I run these all the time. I really like the lightweight. I love climbing on them. Woo! <laughs> A little sketchy. Oh, I still have fatigue. Howdy. Sorry to startle you. Have a good day. That's why we don't go a whole lot faster in Sedona. There's always people on the trails here. So what did we learn other than Sedona trails are always busy, but that's okay. They deserve to be here as much as we do. We need to be courteous and kind to them and share the trail with them. All right, is there a difference? Absolutely. It is less harsh, there's more control, and these are lighter and they spin up quicker when you get up the hill. Then I think 90% of riders would feel the difference, but I don't think 90% of riders would be like, oh yeah, that's worth 600 bucks to upgrade. I don't think spending $600 on bird spokes, $600 extra, is going to be the world's best improvement for your bike, the best upgrade you can make for the price. I do think wheels are, but I think there are a lot of other upgrades I would do before bird spokes. But if you've got, you know, a great dropper, you've got the tires you want, you got a great rim, you've got a good fork, you got a good frame, I think it makes a lot of more sense to upgrade to bird spokes than to run a wireless derailleur like I've got here. The wireless derailleur is my favorite shifting experience, but it's not worth the price as far as the performance you get for the dollar. And maybe, you know, maybe these aren't worth it either. They're probably a five to 10% smoother ride. So is that worth $600? For most people, no. For those that want the best of the best or that ride a ton or this is your thing and you can afford it, by all means, go for it. Now on my full suspensions, wheels don't matter quite so much for me, wheel feel. I'm pretty happy with most wheels because my rear suspension's tackling most of the terrain. So for me on a full suspension, I would not, uh, I'd put my budget somewhere else than on bird spokes unless I had you know, a deep, deep pockets, which I don't, but on a hardtail, it makes even more sense than on a full suspension because it gives the hardtail more of that feel that we love about hardtails, efficient, uh, light, zippy. Um, you put power down and it goes, it really accentuates what makes a hardtail great. It's great on a full suspension too. I just don't think it's as noticeable. So if you're a full suspension guy watching this, uh, and you want to go for it, I mean, go for it. You're going to have better traction. It's going to be lighter. There are plenty of upsides, but I don't think it will be quite as night and day as it is on a hardtail. Mountain biking is an expensive sport, period, full stop, no matter what you do. Even if you buy entry-level $1,500 bike, you're still going to spend 100 to 300 on a helmet, shoes, gloves, glasses, backpack, repair kit. Like, it's an expensive sport. And truth be told, most hobbies are expensive these days. Whether you fish or you boat or you jet ski, you ski or snowboard, like whatever your thing is, you spend a lot of money on it. So if mountain biking is your thing and it's what you dream about before you go to sleep and it's what you work for and you can't wait for the weekend when you ride, little things like really nice wheels or the right tire compound for where you are make a huge difference. And I would argue that if this is your escape from life, and you just love having the best of the best, and you love this sport, and it's just your passion, who am I to tell you how to spend your money? I love hardtails. I'm in a unique position where I get to try a lot of really cool stuff and experiment. I've had zero issues with them. I've got three wheels with bird spokes on them. 
I hope to have many, many more because they're absolutely wonderful. If I had the budget, every single wheel set I owned would have bird spokes. I really like them. And I was surprised that all things being equal except for the spokes, there was a noticeable softer ride. So then the question is, hmm, could I take like a $600 cheap Chinese carbon wheel set and throw bird spokes on it and make it wonderful? I don't know. I know that these are already softer rims than like light bicycle rims, but that's a good question for another experiment. I see no reason other than price not to get bird spokes. If you want to pick my brain about all sorts of these experimental things or get advice on what parts to put on your bike or what bike to buy next, become a patron today. That's how I support this channel, how I put groceries on the table for my family. This is my full-time job and I rely on my wonderful patrons to make this possible. I'm not sponsored by Bird. I'm not sponsored by Atomic. They're not paying me money to make this. Thankfully, Atomic sent these in so I could compare these back to back. Really appreciate them. Wayne's a great guy. If you need fat bike wheels, mountain wheels, road wheels, gravel wheels, and you want Bird spoke options, they do that as well. Really cool shop building some awesome stuff. But I rely on my patrons to be able to make this my job. I intentionally don't pick up a lot of sponsors because I want to be able to review a lot of different stuff and stay neutral. So if you appreciate that and you appreciate things you've learned here and you've learned something, I've got a link to pick a couple bucks my way. Or if you want to pick my brain, become a patron today, patreon.com slash hardtail party. Thanks for getting nerdy with me. This gave me a few new ideas for some new experimental videos. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching everybody. There's a party in the mountains and you're invited.